Good evening. evening. Welcome to our Lenten midweek service. Uh, This is our final Wednesday Lenten service. Uh, We will not have a Lenten service next Wednesday, but we will be offering a Monday Thursday service next Thursday at 6.30 p.m. and a Good Friday service next Friday at 6.30 p.m. No soup and supper beforehand, though. Let's take a moment now and quiet our hearts and our minds and turn our attention to the Lord that we come to worship this evening. I invite you to stand as you are able and join me in the opening litany. The prophet Joel calls us to return to the Lord with all our hearts. Lord, use this holy season of Lent to reorient our lives toward you. As we raise our voices in lament, Comfort us and give us cause for hope. Bless our worship, our work, and our play. Guide us with your spirit that we may follow where you lead in confidence and trust. The church is one foundation, hymn number 654.
Let us pray. Holy and merciful God, in times of distress, turn our hearts and minds toward you. Let our communal laments be signs to those around us that we worship you, a God who hears and holds our cries. As we lament together in community, may we provide space to all searching for ways to voice their own pain and grief. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Our scripture reading for this evening is Psalm 44, verses 1 through 10, 13, and 17 through 26. We have heard with our ears, O God. Our ancestors have told us what deeds you performed in their days in the days of old. You with your own hand drove out the nations, but them you planted. You afflicted the peoples, but them you set free. For not by their own sword did they win the land, nor did their own arm give them victory, but your right hand and your arm and the light of your countenance for you delighted in them. You are my king and my God. You command victories for jo Jacob. Through you, we push down our foes. Through your name, we tread down our assailants. For not in my bow do I trust, nor can my sword save me. But you have saved us from our foes and have put to confusion those who hate us. In God we have boasted continually and we will give thanks to your name forever. Selah. Yet you have rejected us and abased us and have not gone out with our enemies. You made us turn back from the foe, and our enemies have gotten spoil. You have made us the taunt of our neighbors, the derision and scorn of those around us. All this has come upon us, yet we have not forgotten you or been false to your covenant. Our heart has not turned back, nor have our steps departed from your way. Yet you have broken us in the haunt of jackals and covered us with deep darkness. If we had forgotten the name of our God or spread out our hands to a strange God, would not God discover this? For God knows the secrets of our heart. Because of you, we are being killed all day long and accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Rouse yourself. Why do you sleep, O Lord? Awake. Do not cast us off forever. Why do you hide your face? Why do you forget our affliction and our oppression? For we sink down to the dust. Our bodies cling to the ground. Rise up. Come to our help. Redeem us for the sake of your steadfast love. I invite you to meditate on this reading for a couple moments, and then I have a short reflection that I will share with you.
The theme for our Lenten midweek services has been Holy Lament, and tonight's focus is Communal Lament. Communal Lament. This series has explored various kinds of lament found in Scripture. Each week we have considered what it means to sit in our grief rather than to try to push it aside. We have discovered that many faithful believers have wrestled with grief, sorrow, and questions for God about why the innocent suffer. This series understands lament as one of the more faithful things that we can do. When we approach God with honesty and humility, and we admit that some things are too big for our hearts to bear, we will find there not a disapproving God, but one who weeps with us. We will find a God who can take our grief and disappointment and transform them into holy joy and renewed hope. We learn that ultimately, that Jesus' death on the cross, the place to which this season of Lent leads us, is the reason that we never mourn as those without hope. This week, as I said, the focus is on communal laments. Sometimes disaster strikes not just one person or just one household, but an entire community, even an entire nation. At such times, we can find strength in coming together to mourn. Raising our collective voices in a loud cry to God. Just as we need the support of the community when we face individual calamity, we also need one another in the face of shared disaster. We need one another for strength and courage, for comfort, to help make sense of what often seems so senseless, destruction due to natural disaster or destruction due to human violence. I'd like to share a couple questions with you that I invite you to meditate on for a moment or so, and then I invite you to think about these questions as you leave here this evening. What expressions of communal lament do you find most meaningful? What expressions of communal lament do you find most meaningful? How have you felt the strength of your community in times of disaster or distress? How have you felt the strength of your community in times of disaster or distress? You are my King and my God. Redeem us for the sake of your steadfast love. Amen. Our hymn is hymn number 615.
in all our grief. Hymn number 615. Would you stand as you are able? see oh yeah this is working as pastor frank was sharing the uh, the meditation uh, i was thinking of uh, john dunn who uh, wrote the famous uh, words no man is an island and certainly all of us can relate to those times when we as a uh, community as a nation have experienced um, great cause for grief. Uh, obviously, 9-11 comes to mind, doesn't it? But there are certainly other, other times as well. So in our prayers, we have the opportunity to uh, gather uh, with one voice all of our, our laments, that's our focus during this Lenten season, all of our concerns, our fears, um, as well as our causes for rejoicing. And uh, as it becomes so meaningful that we look around and we are one body in the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? We're all one body. And when we pray, when we lift up those petitions, we're all praying together. 
as young people say, how cool is that? I mean, that is strengthening. That, that's just tremendously important. And I know during those times when I have felt down or low or, or in a spirit of lamenting uh, how helpful it has been to know that, there, that you, you, you are there with your faith and your um, love and your presence to lift me up and strengthen me. And again, how cool is that? And I hope that you've experienced similar things as well in your times when you felt, you know. And so we have the opportunity again tonight to lift up uh, those prayers. So for what would you wish to pray this evening? I'm rejoicing that, I'll, I'll, I'm still rambling here, I'm rejoicing that uh, to find out that uh, Mary Ann Holzer is doing better. And um, she's, she's still got a journey ahead of her, but she is on, uh, on the right course now and feeling already some better. And Sherry was, has been in touch with Dan, uh, who says that uh, she's starting to get her appetite back, right? So uh, I'm giving thanks for that. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amy. For Amy's niece, Colleen, as she deals with some legal battles and other, other issues. So we lift her up. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I haven't listened to a great deal of news this week for some reason. It's been a rare week in that regard. Uh, so I, I confess I don't really know what's happening. What, anything of significance in the news today? I didn't even listen to the news yet today. That uh, for our nation or the world, anything different happened? Help me out here. Well, let's do that, Lee, yeah. Let's pray for our nation. God knows what the needs are, right? So, 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 so we lift up to the Lord our nation and uh, what those needs are. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yeah. Could you hear? Did you hear what she was saying? So we, uh, Sandy wants to lift up her stepdaughter, Lori, who is dealing with some real challenges, um, drinking heavily and what that has caused uh, together with some other things. So we lift up Lori and ask God's direction and help and strength uh, for her to be well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yeah. I'm thankful that Pastor Frank is doing better. He's still sitting up there, which is really a good thing, right? You know, so we can give thanks that he's able to be uh, with us, of course, and, uh, and experiencing, I think, some uh, healing, right, Pastor Frank? So we're going to celebrate that and ask God's continued a blessing uh, for Pastor Frank and his continued uh, return to full strength and, and good health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yes, Amy.
behalf of the, the homeless, those who are struggling in, in that arena, if you will, for whatever reason, uh, n multiple reasons aren't there. Everybody has a story, and so we ask God's blessing uh, and provision and help uh, for all of the homeless. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yeah, you know, the, um, it was to Father Abraham that, uh, that the Lord God uh, said that Abraham was blessed to be a blessing. And he was given those great three blessings of uh, land and, and nation, you know, offspring, if you will, and then the promise of God's continued care. And Abraham learned that he... He needed to be an ambassador, a, a, a steward of those blessings, and so do we. We've been so greatly blessed, and uh, we are so blessed to be able here at St. Peter's to, to be somewhat of a blessing, right, to the homeless and, and providing the shelter and, and, and so forth. So, yeah, so we can give thanks for that and ask that God continues to use us as the body of Christ here at St. Peter's to be a blessing to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yes. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, your daughter, you said, it was, is traveling tomorrow. So God's tra travel mercies, right? Yeah, and uh, yeah, there will be there will there will probably be those traveling, others traveling during um, Holy Week. This Sunday is Palm Sunday, Passion Sunday, and then we enter into Holy Week, and obviously Easter. Some some of our young people will be on um, on spring break, I, I think, right? So. Yeah, so I appreciate your lifting that up and uh, for her and for all those who will be uh, traveling. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything else? Yes, please, Tom. Huh? Tom says, we want to pray for, and I think you had a specific person in mind, right? But we'll lift up, without name, let's just lift up those who um, don't, don't fully have uh, that faith uh, to trust and know the Lord Jesus as, um, as not only a great uh, teacher, if you will, but as Lord and Savior. Yeah, for, for all those who... Uh, haven't uh, realized the fullness maybe of that journey, that faith journey, and uh, that God's mercy might be upon them. And we trust that it will be. Yeah, and the Holy Spirit will, will be at work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yeah. We want to hold in prayer Joe, who helps with our uh, Wednesday feeding program. He begins radiation treatments tomorrow. Oh, yeah. A lot of us... I've gotten to know Joe through the Wednesday program. He's been very faithful in um, helping out with that and even providing some of those, some of the food occasionally and cooking and so forth. Yeah, so let's lift up Joe as he begins his journey and that it might be a journey that will bring him to, uh, to health and healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So gracious God, we lay all of these things, all of these uh, petitions, all of these thanksgivings and prayers before your throne of grace, knowing that you hear our prayer and that you grant us your love and hope and peace and joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
and also with you. Would you share a sign of that peace with one another in whatever way you feel comfortable? Peace the Lord be with you. Peace the Lord be with you. Peace the Lord be with you. Thank you. Peace. And I have to say, Pastor, I love this prayer. The word, I, I just, I love this. Oh, Thank you. Kathy, peace be with you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. peace the Lord be with you. Peace the Lord be with you. Peace the Lord be with you. Our worship continues as we offer our gifts and our tithes to our Lord. Our offertory hymn, A New Commandment, is printed in your bulletin. Would you stand as you are able? mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast. 
that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all people. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave, for, gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread, wine, and juice. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us, and then send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all time and all places, with the earth and all its creatures, with the sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy trinity, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Would you pray with me in the words our Savior taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the children of God. You may be seated. For Holy Communion today, you'll be invited to come forward and pick up a plastic cup on your way up. The bread will be placed in your hands with the promise, the body of Christ given for you. The red wine will then be poured into your cup with the assurance, the blood of Christ shed for you. We also have white grape juice if you wish not to have red wine, and we have gluten-free bread for those who require it.
Would you stand as you are able? May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his most precious blood strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, at this table we have tasted your immeasurable love. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the bread of life. Amen. Beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, and renewed. God bless you and keep you, shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and always give you peace. Amen. Our sending hymn is hymn number 572, Now It Is Evening. Thank you. 